What's going on everybody? My name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on Linux operating systems. So in this series, I'm going to cover, cover some of the commands and functionalities that are available in Linux operating systems so that you can use them to the best, best possible way uh, available. So let's get started. In this video is more of an introductory video where I'll be talking about uh, Linux and some of the history behind it. And the next video onwards we'll start into um, doing some actual uh, actual commands and stuff okay so for those who do not know let's talk a little bit about linux and what it is linux is actually a broad term for free and open source operating systems with it which is built using a linux kernel so linux in the as its origin it's started as a free and open source replacement for unix the most fundamental component or the heart of the linux distribution is the linux kernel this is the miniature version of an operating system. A Linux kernel is nothing but the miniature version of an operating system. Okay, and that was the Linux kernel was developed by Linus Torvalds in seven on seventeenth September nineteen ninety one, and he released it on that day. So, you, Linux, uh, the history of Linux has quite a lot of ties with Unix, and it, Unix could be said as a precursor for Linux as well. So. Uh, so it would be Linux history would be complete if we do not talk a little bit about Unix. Most of you might know uh, Dennis Ritchie. He is the uh, founding father of the C programming language. While he was working at Bell, AT and T Labs along with his colleagues, uh, along with his colleagues uh, Ken Thompson and a few others, they made a prototype operating system called as AT and T Unix in 1969. They had their own uh, requirements and the operating systems that were available from the vendors. At that time for the missions they were not good enough for them and they wanted a multi-user operating system for that regard so they developed their own operating system and that was nicknamed as at and unix and that okay gave rise to the unix operating systems uh, since uh, at and bell labs made the uh, licensing free uh, licensing and made it uh, made the source code free to use by people by a lot of people it became pretty popular and uh, developed very pretty fast until 1984. Beyond 1984, uh, AT&T made the source code proprietary and thereby making it not easy to modify by other people and it charged for each and every license. Prior to that it was not that, it was not charging but afterwards it's charged for the license and uh, that, ins that made so many people annoyed and uh, it, it made uh, so many people angry. One of them, I would say, who got really, fr who got really frustrated by this was Richard Martin Stallman called as nicknamed as RMS for short. He wa wanted to start a, f uh, wanted to start a uh, free and uh, free to use replacement for Unix. He wanted to start an operating system uh, so that um, wherein the code is uh, easy, uh, transparent so that anybody can come and work on it and modify it as per their wish. And he started the GNU project in 1983 and uh, later the Free Software Foundation 19 in 1984 and later the, he wrote the uh, GNU general public license called as GNU GPL in 1989 so through which people can uh, publish their operating publish their software uh, without losing authorship and, and keeping it uh, keeping the authorship uh, clean all right so Stallman and his team worked some worked for quite a while and uh, they were able to do uh, come up with quite a lot of progress so uh, more, some of the most uh, impressive ones are by recreating the li recreating some of the libraries, the compilers, text editors, shell, and even the windowing systems that are used in an operating system. They were able to make a lot of progress in developing these. Although some of the low level elements and uh, and the components that are inter uh, intimately connected to the uh, Linux kernel of an operating system, nam namely the device drivers, daemons, and several others, they were they couldn't get them done properly. They had, they was pretty, the development was halted and it was pretty stark and it was pretty incomplete. Later, la enter Linus Torvalds. He was working with Minix operating systems at that time uh, and he became pretty fascinated by it. And uh, similar to Unix, it was, uh, the source code was free, but the licensing was free, to, uh, the source code was free to modify, but the licensing was pretty expensive. So he got frustrated by it and he wanted to write his own source code for a Linux kernel and he wrote it in 1991 and officially, I mean, although he finished in 19, 17 September 1991, he released it in 1992 and uh, Torvalds named uh, this kernel to be Le Linux 
similar to Unix. Earlier he wanted to name it after himself, uh, saying Linux, Linus. But since it was pretty similar to Unix, he wanted to give the Unix like feel. Hence he gave the name as Linux. Now only thing that was pending was a merger. So, uh, so the Stallman's team from GNU had the software as required, and that, uh, Linus came up with an operating system that uh, operating systems kernel, so to that you can intermerge. And one thing led to the other, and there we go. We have the GNU Linux merger that gave us the Linux operating systems. And looking at this implementation and how it was, and looking at the implementation and the philosophy of free and open source uh, ideas of uh, Stallman and Linus, several people picked up this idea and, crea and created their own implementations of GNU and Linux, and they and that gave rise, rise to Linux distributions. Pretty cool story, right? And now. As a consequence of several people working on it, you have plenty of plenty of Linux distributions on the internet. So if you want to pick one, it's uh, there are so many options available. You're actually spoiled for choices. Okay, some of the broad categories, are broad uh, families of Linux, so to speak, are Debian, Red Hat, Slackware, Gen2, Arch, Android, and there are a few other families as well. These are some of the most common families. And uh, so Debian, Red Hat, Slack, Slackware, Gen2, and Arch, these are primary operating systems. And the other ones like Ubuntu, Gnopix, Fedora, CentOS, OpenSUSE, SUSE, Arch, and uh, these are all derived from the main operating systems. So Ubuntu is again a Linux distribution, but, but it's derived from Debian. Similarly, Kali Linux is uh, derived from an operating system called as Gnopix, which was derived from Debian. Debian. Okay, so this is one family. Likewise, there are a few other families like this. You can go about with and pick one. Some of the most co one common Linux distribution these days is is Ubuntu, but uh, but it's but it uh, how do I put um, even in Ubuntu there are several variants variants available. So Ubuntu itself is behaving like a a, a family a family of Linux distributions so to speak. Okay. Never mind, and uh, this is going on, and uh, this is pretty inter interesting. In the sense, all your smartphones these days have Android, and all and Android itself, Android itself is some variant of a Linux distribution. And uh, unlike Windows, where and the uh, desktop software and the operating system are like intertwined, Linux is pretty modular, and as a consequence, for a, e, any kind of Linux distribution, you can put your own desktop on it. And there are several varieties of desktop softwares available. These are these are to name a few. Okay, some of the common ones are GNOME and KDE, and recently some of the other ones that are pretty famous are XFC, Mate, Cinnamon, Budgie, LXD, and all. And there are several others uh, to name. And uh, before we go on, I like to give the, some subjective pros and cons of Linux. Uh, reason is that uh, reason I put this as subjective is because what I say as um, what I say as uh, pros and cons might be advantages to some other people, and there are quite a lot of debates on which is better. And if you go and search in the internet as to why to use Linux instead of Windows or why to use Windows instead of Linux, it's going it's a it's a big tug of war going on with a lot of people debating and, and the de debates becoming too harsh. So I'm going to keep it in a neutral tone, okay? No hard feelings on any on, on the operating system or any operating system for that matter. Just saying that, um, the, now on, in my opinion, advantage of uh, Linux is that you can, it's the so entire soft operating system and software are free and open source. You, you have full freedom to do whatever you want. There, it's pretty secure, pretty secure and has very little chance for virus and malicious software attacks. Reasonably stable. If you pick the right version, it's reasonably stable, and then um, it uses very little amount of resources. And uh, as a consequence, it's faster to boot and uh, has, uh, doesn't occupy quite a lot of chunk in your operating system in your machine. And then you can customize it as any way you want. And uh, if you uh, if if you want to have good, have a easier or cheaper replacement for Windows, it is quite possible to use some Linux distribution for it. And it's scalable in the sense if you can install it in a simple machine like a Raspberry Pi to supercomputers and data servers, it's possible. The, some of the disadvantages of Linux is, is that sometimes you have too many choices, it can be frustrating and confusing. Kind of confusing. And um, sometimes, especially if you have any errors, it, it can be so demanding from the user. It has a safe learning curve, which can be frustrating for people. And uh, some of the complexities are too much, and it's pretty, and they're pretty obvious. And it, it evolves continuously. Good, but if you want to get used to one particular setting, it might be a little hard. But nevertheless, it's not a very big deal. And of course, 
one of the major uh, uh, not my complaint per se but many people might not shift to linux is because gaming gaming industry has a massive monopoly has a massive uh, feet a uh, massive establishment and um, has a massive establishment in windows as far as the gaming gaming is concerned it's a little bit backward in linux and um, that's that's one of the major issues so with that the presentation is over the presentation is over um if you want to know more about linux you can come uh, you can come to uh, wiki this wikipedia pages where the entire story of linux and all its systems are been explained neat uh, all is explained neatly and if you want to look at the different families of linux let's say you have this massive chart from Lin from the uh, from wikipedia up uploaded in creator commons there you can see all the family chart of linux the debian and debian and all its derivatives and this one particularly is open to like where like where there are other ones like slackware red hat and up you can just go and have a look at the, look at this it's pretty amazing as to how many are actually available and then if you want to search for linux distribution there are plenty in num plenty in number so if you want to just uh, play around with it pick any one of your choice but if you have any particular uh, um uh, distribute if you want to pick a particular one pick one based on your requirement and uh, there's no hard there's no hard feelings in that and if you want to know more about linux distribution there are some wikipedia article pages over here where uh, you can read more about it for but for our work our, for our tutorials uh, this is just more like an intro and from next video onwards we'll actually ta we'll actually start working with the linux distribution and uh, i'll be using ubuntu mate for my work i'll be using ubuntu mate for my, for the tutorials you can use any linux distribution of your choice uh, so unless otherwise stated all the commands will work for any linux distribution all right so that's all i have, for, I have uh, that's all i have for you guys guys in this video thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time in another interesting uh, video and in a continuation of it until um, then take care